everybody. I want to go through some basic work I've been doing recently for a job I had that just ended, but this was this was interesting work. So you've all heard about penetration testing or pen test. And this was a job where the client wanted to harden a SUSE Linux image. So this was a fun project. And to do this, I set up a, a Puppet server. And oh yes, this is a VMware 6.5 and ESXi hosts. So I'm running three VMs on here. I'm running a, uh, a pen test VM that's running Tenable Professional. I'm running a Puppet VM that's running Puppet Enterprise. And this is my target machine, which is SUSE 12 Service Pack 4, which is a machine I've been hardening. So let me show you how I've been going about doing this. So I made a lot of Puppet classes. And I'll show you on the actual Puppet server, which is this server here, which is a VM. And I have a uh, directory here called Manifests. And that's the path. So the path is under Puppet Enterprise or Puppet Labs and code environments, production modules, PetSmart, and then there's there's manifests in here. And these manifests are all basically classes I wrote. And there's a bunch of these in here. I think there's about like 170 or something of these in here. But um, these these I derived all from the administration or the, the audit file that MITRE and, and Tenable picked up. So I made a parser that parsed all this stuff and then I created all these names for the basic pen type problems that had to be closed. And here, here's how all the files that have been created and these all go to specific tests that Tenable Professional requires. So all these files are basically um, puppet classes inside a module. I haven't made these terribly fancy. They're just basic classes. It, it, this is almost like a big script where you put in a desired state configuration in Puppet and these classes will then um, take the machine to desired state. So uh, let's take a look at this one. So you don't want to have a talk client installed. So let's show you how this thing looks. All these files are about the same, but they all start off with these headers that I pulled out of um, Tenable's downloadable audit files. And here's the actual class I wrote. So this will uninstall a class and you simply tell Puppet that you want this package absent and you want to use zipper in SUSE 12 to pull it out. And I was doing it sort of a brute force way using exec, which is not the way you want to do it. So I ended up changing all that around. Anyway, to get these classes working, you want to use Puppet Enterprise. And let me show you that. So all those files I put into Puppet Enterprise here, and that's on, on a node again I have here called Puppet. So here we can look at say classification, I made a um, group here called Hardening Production, which is full of all the files that will work on hardening SUSE 12 Enterprise Service Pack 4. So here you see all the files that I showed you in that directory are all now hand loaded in here. And this is probably not an optimal way to do it, but I was trying to go depth first to simply figure out if I could close all the uh, all the Tenable requirements. And so Tenable, Tenable Professional is a pen testing program that will uh, log onto the server with root and it will start running all sorts of tests to uh, satisfy compliance requirements. So I think there's about 160 files here or so that I put together. But anyway, so there's all the files. I gotta go on and on and on and on and on and on. So anyway, this is about probably, all this work was about four months work. But anyway, going beyond that, um, I wanna show you the um, 
the actual um, Tenable software. I don't think I put that up. Here's here's a SUSE here's a SUSE host I've been fooling with here, and uh, it's working pretty good. Um, so this thing is running in multi-user mode. It's not running in graphical mode because Tenable wants you to pull out all the graphical stuff, all the GNOME, all the X windows. So I pulled that out. That was that was a lot of work. And so there's a puppet agent on this system, and if you want to see what happens when the agent runs, it'll run all the software um, that is listed here. It'll run all this stuff. All those puppet files will be run. So we can run that now again. Type in puppet agent minus T and you'll see puppet will do a run. And I got this down to working in 6.38 seconds from 38 seconds. So I did a lot of pruning this week. Looks like a few things here went wrong. Yeah, sometimes I get some some red marks here. So I'm getting about like six point and a six and a half second runs here. And sometimes this thing's in the middle of doing its own scan that I've interrupted. Let's see if it does it again. So you want to fix the red, of course. Sometimes I'll get a whole white scan. Okay, there's a white scan there. So oh no, two reds. So anyway, you want to go back and investigate the reds, see what happened. But beyond all that, what really matters is how did your pen test go? So let's jump on to uh, Tenable here, and I'll show you that. Let me uh, get on to Tenable here. So I have a pen test system set up here, which I've been talking about. Okay, here's Tenable. So this is Tenable Professional, which I have running on that VM. So again, here's all the... VMs that that's running on this thing called pen test here, pen test VM right there. So anyway, we don't really care about that. We care about how do you do a scan? So now we're on here. I put in this stuff in my password. And we'll jump on here. So I'm running a trial license. It's going to expire pretty soon. Okay, so here's a scan that I ran recently and I got all this stuff out of here. So if you look on the scan, there's 261 compliance that are good. There's nine warnings on this thing. And there's two failed. These failed are easy to get rid of. I can easily disable IPv6. And I'm using root to run this test. So this, this SSH is open to root. Those are easily taken care of. So really, I guess compared to Tenable, I've completely hardened this whole system up. And this has taken a long time, and it's ready to go. So that's great. How does this work? So what I would do is revert the system back to a known state with a snapshot. So let's go do that. So we'll take this away, take this away, take this away. I want to go back into ESXi here. And there's my SUSE computer here. So what I want to do is halt it. So I'm on, I'm on SUSE now. I'm going to halt that system. It's now halted. And we'll go back here to ESXi and I'm going to power it off now. And this is a VM again. So we'll power it off. And now I'm going to restore it from a snapshot which is basically has a puppet agent installed. It has the keys installed. But that's about it. So this is a hardening effort just like when you first install a system and you put a puppet agent on it, and you've not run any hardening yet. That's what all this is about. So let me find the uh, snapshots. Here they are. Manage snapshots. Going to restore the snapshot like this. There's the restore. Close that. Now, from many times running this, I know I can just power on the system here. So power it on. And it'll come up with GNOME for or something with GNOME. So. This is how SUSE Enterprise 12 SP4 comes out of the box. It'll load all that stuff up. You'll see GNOME come up and all that. And it'll pretty much now attach to the Puppet server and start running Puppet as soon as it can. And that's well and good. 
so now it's up and we have you know graphical interface of course uh, pen test or or tenable doesn't want that so let's now for the fun of it run the pen test again so here's our pen tester again go back to scans and i'm going to run the scan again so now the scan's running you'll see it'll start twirling around here this will take some time but what you'll notice is since puppet hasn't fully completed its remediation on this server you'll see that i'll have a lot of errors i might have like 144 fails but ah, we're learning here so i'm showing you how i i tested the system that it was um reliable that we could put on thousands of machines of SUSE 12 enterprise and then run the puppet dsl to harden the stuff from puppet enterprise server so that's what's going on now and here's our uh, system again and we can jump back on there i have keys in here so it logs me on automatically So we're running our, our scan now. We have our pen test um, running our scan. This scan might take 10 minutes. We'll see. It doesn't take that long, but we'll see how it turns out. So let's see what's going on here. The top command. Sometimes you can see what Puppet's doing with the top command and see how far it's going. Um, you can also take a look at the um, messages file. Let me SU here. Let's see, do I have a password for this thing? I think so. And that didn't work. I think that command used to work. Oh, I do sudo su, and I have the password turned off. There we go, forgot about that. Okay, that's very insecure, but I do that because this is my target test system. So now, Let's take a look at, at var log uh, messages. And you can see that uh, Tenable is logging root in, doing stuff, logging root out. So Tenable is um, testing really hard here. So that's activity on that it's working and doing things. Let's, uh, let's see what's going on over here with the... Uh, Okay, so we're still spinning along here, so let's wait for it to stop. Anyway, this is a pen test, penetration test, where we're, uh, we're testing everything that Tenable uh, wants us to test in a compliance one. And let me show you everything that's in a compliance one. So I have the audit file here. And let me bring up a separate window and show you that audit file. Okay, looking for, there's the audit file right there. So, excuse me, here's the um, tenable audit file for SUSE Enterprise 12. And this file is what compliance is running. And so they have their own regex in here in their own language sort of. And I use this file to pattern all my Puppet classes off of that Puppet is using to create the classes and run its remediation program on Puppet. So this worked out well. And my theory was that since my client likes to use Tenable Cloud, I figured Tenable Professional is probably pretty close to that. And let's get all these classes made. And sure enough, it worked. So in running Tenable Professional locally here, I was able to close a lot of vulnerabilities. So let me show you that here. So it's still spinning around here. It takes time to do all this testing. I don't see much going through here on the client system. But this regex was nasty to, to figure out sometimes. Some of these things I had to actually log on to Regex 101 and uh, figure this stuff out. So uh, let's try and find some Regex here that it has. It was interesting. Some of these have some pretty intense Regex in here that it uses to test things. Uh, where is it? Okay, sys control commands. 
I'm looking for some regex here. Come on. Can show you guys how to do that. Okay, here's some. There's an expect command. Still haven't found any regex. So this thing, this thing has regex all the way through it. There's an expect command again. Actually, that looks like the right rex right there. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can use that. I'm trying to find one that I actually have used before. Let's see how our scan is going. Our scan is still going. Okay. So I found some pretty cool sites. Um, you probably know about Regex 101. And uh, this one here I found, which is really great. This site here, Reg Expressor 2. Well, probably some grad student wrote this thing, but this site is really great. So here's some regex I was working on before. And for this one, you can take that regex that was inside the audit file and say, okay, this thing wants white space, then it wants the word all without quotes, it wants white space, then it wants a colon, it wants white space, and it wants these IP addresses and white space. So sometimes I had to use this this program to figure out what the regex look like, because it's painful to do it by hand. And then I was using um, I, I was using regex 101 to basically take this rex and then work with it. So regex 101 is useful too. I hope I got that right. There it goes, regex 101. And now, did it come up? Come on. There it is. So I would need to put this string in here and then I could test some regex down here against that string. If it's right, the string turns blue and the world is saved. So that's how that works. Let's see if our uh, test is done yet here, if our pen test is done. What is going on here? It's still pen testing. So this does take time, I apologize. I'm trying to keep you guys entertained while the scan is running there. Let's see what else we can find in here for regex. Find like an easy one that I can show you. Okay, what's that one? Destination log server. Some of these were just really crazy the way Tenable had these things figured out. It just wasn't easy to make this work. But I was really happy that I got this thing down to two fails. And I want to show you that there'll be a lot of fails when this scan is done because I'm sure Puppet hasn't hardened the whole system. It seems like I got to run Puppet about a half an hour for all the cases to be uh, run through a few times and everything hardens up. So, boy, it's still running. I hope, uh, actually, you know what? I bet this isn't working. So, usually when it takes a real long time, that means, uh, that means on the system I have a problem with root passwords. So let's see if root password's working here. So if I try to go as root, let's see if this will work. Okay, yeah, it worked. Okay, so I can log in as root. So if that will work, and I have a super secret root password here that I gotta find. If that will work, then I'm sure Tenable's working. The only way I got Tenable to work was logging as root. I'm getting the super secret root password here for you, which I use a password generator to make because because Tenable wants some really crazy, terrible, awful root password. So I have this one here. I'm cutting and pasting it now. So I can't type it. It's so bad. Okay, so yes, I can get on its root to that system. So I think Tenable's working. Oh, Tenable's done. Okay, look here. So this thing went from a circle to a check mark. That means the scan's done. Now Hold your breath and click this and you'll say what happened. Okay, so you can see here that since I simply restarted the system, there's not only two errors now, there's there's 127 fails. So my puppet classes will fix all these. So here's an example of how bad things were when I started this whole effort for this client. So when you go on down all through here, there, there's just a bazillion things. and all these fails match everything here in this audit file that I downloaded from Tenable. So 
the trick is to make puppet classes that match all the stuff. So anyway, I did that. And what we can do now is, is forcibly run puppet again. It would run every 10 minutes, I guess, and clean up. But since I'm making a video and since you guys have a life, I don't want to keep you. So let's run puppet manually. Here it goes. So let's see what happens. Okay, so it looks like Puppet's running already. So it's it's already running, and I would interrupt it. But this is part of pen testing, where we're now applying remediation to the client system, and we're waiting. So a lot of this is, is hurry up and wait. Let's try it again. No, no, no. So it's working away here. I could try another scan and see how things go. Yeah, it's going to be a while, so let's see what's happening on the system here. Is anything going on? Can I run Puppet yet? Nope. And you don't want to manually remove that lock. Just, just don't do that. Just leave it alone. Let it go. Let's look at the messages file again, see what's going on here. Yeah, yeah, Puppet Run in progress. It wouldn't let me do that. So what has the system been doing? Reach target default, interesting. So I think Puppet has some logs too. I think we found some good ones. Let's see, Puppet. I'm in var log. Is there like a like a puppet thing here somewhere? Blah blah blah. I don't see it. Puppet Labs, there it is. What's in here? Anything good? No, I never found anything in here. You th nope. I probably got to run logging or something. It's, it should work. And we run Puppet now. Let's see. Poof. Nope. Okay. What if I start another scan? So we know this thing can reach desired state eventually, but um, I would love to run a scan again. And so you see like on this pen test scan with Tenable Professional, we have a bunch of errors here, a bunch of fails. So we have one, two, seven fails. So if things are going well, this thing should should run again and uh, show us less errors. Let's try that out. Go back to scans. We'll start the scan again. And there it goes. So I take out GNOME. Um, take out lots of stuff, actually. So let's, um, while we're waiting, let's go through these and see what we do here. So I do want to neaten this thing up the way it works. It's not really too snazzy right now. Just sort of throwing in classes and running them, which isn't really the best way to do it. But that's how I started this whole effort. And I haven't really tried to work with the puppet stuff too much. I was really trying to go depth first to try and get this thing to uh, simply scan with very small amount of errors and I did get it down to two and that took me a few months this project took a while so Tenable Professional wants all this stuff taken care of before it will report very small failures in it on, on compliance it's just a huge amount of uh, work I think at one point um, I had a word count of all the files in here on the Puppet server. I'm going to try and run Puppet again, see if she'll go. I can speed things up that way. No, but it's still going, so I hope it didn't hang up. Our scan is still running here, so let's see if it turns out any better. Next scan. 
Usually I let this thing soak for about half an hour and then the scan comes back clean with like two fails like, like it did before in the beginning. But um, that's not going to happen. Not for a while. Let's see, what else can I uh, show you guys here about uh, about pen testing? I can show you how to make a uh, pen test here. So in this thing, you go to scans and you might want to make a new scan. So you'd say new scan here. And they have all these built-in scans in Tenable Professional. But I found, at least for my client, it seemed like they wanted Tenable Cloud. You can put a target in here. That's my uh, machine name. And credentials. Here I am using SSH, using a, a password, going in as root, putting in the root password, which was a long password and that's it save it and then you basically want to change the scan and configure it and run a compliance and so you can run any compliance you want but for this I was running SUSE SUSE um, and I was running um, level one that's the scan i want right there for compliance so run that compliance scan and i took all this stuff here as boilerplate do the save there we go so if i run the scan it would it would work but this is simply for a demo let's go back to our scans now and i can delete the scan because it's just a uh, a hack and now all the trash scans are in the trash can here so you can see i've been Scanning, scanning, scanning like crazy. Um, this scan is now completed, so let's see how it did. Okay, so you can see that Puppet is working. We're down from 144 to um, 96 errors, so it's doing a lot of work. So we only have, well, 90, <coughs> 96 fails now, which is still a good bit. Let's see if I can run Puppet again. Uh, we'll try it here. And run it again. There it is. Okay, so this time Puppet was done. So I'll run it again. And the red means that something failed. And sometimes, to get desired state, I've had to run this a few times. And since we're running from a newly installed system, it seems like Puppet has to run a few times to get everything down pat to desired state. So there's some red there where things failed. So 25.15 seconds. I know I can run this thing in like 6.5 seconds when things are all done. So let's run it once more and see what happens. When I get down to about six seconds, I know that this thing is all configured. So let's try that out. So it looks like I still got some problems here. Let's see what's failing up here. What's going wrong? It doesn't like zipper. Oh, look at that. Yeah, so I can't I can't hit updates because I didn't put an update key in this thing. And that's one thing I didn't put into my snapshot. So I have to run some command to allow me access to ten or to um Susie's updates and then I'll reach my desired state. Ugh. Forgot about that. So I wonder if I got any closer to my 
goal of having two errors. You saw in the beginning I had two errors, and that's all I had. Because I ran this thing for a few days. So I don't think now we're going to do too well unless I get the updates fixed. Yeah, it just can't run updates. So, And I don't forget the command. See, what's the command to do that? So let's run the scan here again. And while the scan's running, maybe I'll try and figure out how to get the updates working for you here. I know that I had a key that I had to pull out of somewhere. And I'm sure I didn't keep that key handy. There might be a command that I used that still, no, it wouldn't be in the system because I blew the system away. Well, let's see, how do we do that? This is one thing where the note takers are, are much stronger than I am. If I say install update certificate command line, let's. I think it was a key. Update key. Is it a key? Key tool? Key? Upgrading SUSE deployment guide. There it is. How do we do that? Blah, blah, blah. I like SUSE, but it's pretty verbose. When you try and find things, it's like, it's, it's almost overdone. I just want to find the command line to do it. Mm. Nope, nope, nope. Great detail, but never really how to do it. Aha, activation keys. That's what I want. I want an activation key, but I don't want salt. Blah. Update activation keys. Okay, what about that? System details page. There is some way to do this usage. Wow. I had this written down somewhere, but I don't know where I put it. License activation forums. Let's see if some guy puts in the command to do it here. Um, blah, 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 no commands. Register codes, this is true. This looks more familiar. Yep, I remember doing this, I remember doing this. Tell me how to put it into the system, please. Dashboard, blah, blah, blah. There's like one command to run that does this. And I don't see it. What's this thing? Subscription center. That's how to find my key. Okay, that's not terribly helpful. How's our scan doing here, people? It's done. Okay, how do, how do we do now with the updates off? Um, oh, look at that. So did we need the updates? Look at that, look at that. Hit it. Okay, look, we got three errors. Okay, aid is installed. So aid is not installing. IP6 and SSH, I had these two errors. This error is the only one that I have now, really. These two don't count. So out of this long-winded video that's gone on for probably half an hour, you've finally seen pen testing and a SUSE system get hardened with public classes. So. That's the magic when you write all these puppet classes and you get puppet running and you put a puppet cert in here and you connect with a puppet master and you get everything installed in here that will remediate your system, you get remediation. So that's how to do it. I wish I could find the command to fix the updates. Um, I could try Puppet once more. I don't think it'll fix aid, though. I think I need, well, I think aid needs to be configured. So it probably 
who's looking for updates. But I thought that would have a lot more problems without the update packages. I'm surprised that Tenable is being this easy on me. So I know it's just kind of blowing through now because I'm through at 6.35 seconds. I'm going to run the scan again, but I don't think we'll get rid of the third error. I don't think we'll get down to two errors. I think we'll be stuck with three of them, but perhaps I'll still look for the key here. So there's the uh, scan running for the third time. And you can see it's spinning along here. Let's see if we can find our update key. Unfortunately, I think I put that key on the laptop. But what I want to do is keep Googling for that. Let's see what that works. How to update Linux software. I remember this took me a long time to figure out and I didn't make a snapshot of the base system. Okay, refresh, upgrade it. Okay, that's nice. Okay, no, I wanna to attach to the repositories. I don't wanna update. That's not very helpful. How do I add that key? Install key. Let's see if that works. Hmm. I don't think we're gonna get anywhere here. Nope, nope, nope. How do I do this? Nope, this is all using zipper. We don't care about that. Software command line. Maybe this will work. Let's take a look at Yast. Installing patches, online update. It's kind of neat. Susie has all these different ways. You can use RPM, you can use Yast, you can use zipper. It's kind of a cool system once you get the hang of it. I was sort of intimidated by it when I first started this thing way back in January, but it is pretty cool. Oh, I'm not going to find this at all. What if I type in new system? New system. SUSE. S-U-S-E. 12. SUSE install. Okay, let's put in the word repository. Yeah, it looks good, key. All right, do we know how to do this? Uh, command line tools, blah, blah, blah. Hi, system upgrade. I remember uh, this This was really, really, really hard to find when I did this a long time ago. And I'm not sure why I didn't snapshot the thing, but I just didn't snapshot it. But I'm pretty happy with only three years. So my job with this client is over. So I guess I don't care too much about this, but I wanted to capture what this job entailed and keep it for posterity and show you folks how to run. A pen test. Okay, here's our third scan. I doubt it's any different than our second scan, but take a look. And two, 260, you're good. Nine warnings. Let's stick with the errors. Still got three errors. So we're not going to get aid gone or in there, I don't think. Um, Z, Y, P, P, E, R, install. A, I, D, E, boom, what happens? Okay, so it's saying what? I don't have access to updates. Let's see the updates here. This is a key I need. Um, and that's why I can't get the last fail done because I don't have the update key in here to allow access to repositories that I have registered before and I simply don't remember the command and I can't find the key. So. I guess this video is over.
But thank you so much for watching. And I hope this um, did give you a bit of insight into SUSE, a uh, bit of insight into um, into hardening with um, tenable professional from Nessus or Nessus professional. So I guess I'll log out of here, call it a day. We're all set. Thanks a lot for watching and have a great day.